Hey, this is Rob Unspunk, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 291, and we're going to talk about intuitive leadership. Now, if you've read any of my Rob versus books, you know that I have this love-hate relationship with anybody of, of leadership quality because they don't usually get it, and they don't usually get my sarcasm. So I brought on Terry Wildman, and we're going to talk about intuitive leadership so thanks for being here and off air you talked about the number 291 so you want to share that with the audience and sure. <laughs> because it's it's pretty fascinating if you're into numbers if you're into numerology at all uh when rob said hi everybody i'm terry woldman um when rob mentioned that this was episode 291 i'm like oh okay that's an interesting number uh <laughs> Because in numerology, you add each number individually. So two plus nine plus one equals 12. 12 is a master number in numerology, which is a very powerful number and a lot of positive energy, uh, lots of good juju. But then you add the one and the two and the number 12 and it's three. And three is the Holy Trinity, mind, body, spirit. Also very auspicious, really good, very, very, really good stuff. and that's what we're, we're going to do today. Lots of good stuff. And see, Terry was supposed to be on a prior podcast, but things didn't work out. And and that number would have been, you know, probably lousy according to numerology. So this is the lucky week. This is what you have to pay attention week. to. <laughs> now, is, you know, although we joke about that, a lot of people do. You know, they they they, they want numerology on their side they they want to feel like they're important and and i get that but you know right now in this in today's day and age i think leaders uh aren't making their cast members employees whatever you want to call them feel important and uh, yeah. we're 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 and it's 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 in the military it's in in, in the civilian world mm -hmm. um we're treating our subordinates like dirt. We are. We are. And, you know, in, I got out, well, how long ago was that? 1998, I guess it was. Uh, I read a book and uh, on leadership. It was called The Corporate Mystic by Gay. And I read that book and I went, it's like all the tingles, all the, you know, somebody hit me over the head with, with, with an electric bolt. And I realized that everything I was feeling about leadership was spot on because this book uh, complemented that. And I opened my own leadership center mm -hmm. in 2001, the Winds of Change Holistic Education and Leadership Center. And I owned it from 2001 to 2009. And the goal was to teach leaders professionals and entrepreneurs, how to integrate the practical, tactical, and logical with the emotional, the energetic, the spiritual, intuitive, how to use all sides of yourselves when communicating, when decision, you know, for decision-making, how to reduce your stress levels. Uh, because some, we're in our heads so much that what we don't know, and this is what uh, really triggered this, uh, and ironically, I opened my center. Oh my God. I signed the lease September 1st, and 9 11 happened 10 days later. Mm -hmm. And that first weekend after 9 11, which was on, a, I think it was a Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, I was scheduled to go to California to the Heart Math Institute to get licensed as a Heart Math coach. And my flight was the first flight into San Francisco. It took hours to get there, but I knew I had to go. Mm -hmm. And I just trusted the process, slept on a couple air airplane floors, couldn't believe the air, you know, everywhere were army M16s, you know, whatever they were carrying at that time. It, it was mind blowing. And a couple of people said to me, why are you doing this? I said, I have to, I can't explain it other than I'm following my gut and allowing myself to be led. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband was scared to death, but he says, I know you. I've seen you in action. I'm not getting in your way. <laughs> and I did. And I got licensed in stress management. And um, so a lot of what we do first is work with 
entrepreneurial leaders, and like I said, the, the CEOs, whatever, and teach them how to reconnect the brain and the head with the brain and the heart. Mm -hmm. Because the brain and the heart is the energy field and the heart can be measured six to 10 feet away from the body in a 360 degree circumference. The energy field of the brain is only two inches. Mm -hmm. So when you connect both of them together, you're working with two brains instead of one. So when you're highly stressed, and you think about what I just said about the heart organ and, and the energy field affecting everybody around you, energetically, each and every one of us with our energy field, whether it's positive or negative, are touching the energy field of other people that we are walking around and uh, leading and uh, guiding and that kind of thing. And how we do that amplifies their energy. And because we're uh, over, was it 80 some percent water, everything we do energetically, imagine you, you see what happens with the ripple effect. You throw a rock in and the ripple effect goes out. That's the easiest way to describe it. Well, and, and these things don't make it easier because no, these, are, these are energy disruptors. That's exactly right. We're, we're, we're putting them upside our brain. We're, we're, yeah. and, and this is why I use headed, you know, corded corded the headphones because the new ones are radios and they're sending yes. signals right through our heads and i'm like exactly we're frying our energy we are and, and there's a lot of truth to that um there, there's an awful lot of truth to that and people are their hearing is starting to be affected their eyes are being affected the blu-ray the blue light and even my own eyes i've got i have to wear usually i wear uh, blu-ray glasses because i uh blue light glasses i should say because my eyes by the end of the day are so tired and wiped out. So we're allowing these energy fields to affect our energies. Mm -hmm. So our vision is being affected. Our hearing is being affected. Uh, the waves from all the electronics in our houses affect us. Mm -hmm. So there are ways that we can neutralize a lot of that and, and help to uh, bring some of that stuff down. But it's about recognizing and some people don't believe in that okay that's fine mm -hmm. i can see it feel it and i can see it and feel it so i do believe in it uh, but that doesn't mean that you know i'm right and they're wrong or whatever you know it's mm -hmm. it's just i want to stay healthy yeah yeah i i, <clears throat> I remember this was going back 1995 1994 i had worked for another company before i ventured it off my off on my own in my first company but my boss at the time you know he was he was very big in the community he wanted to be recognized as as this guy who you know gave 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 he was always there but he treated all the employees like shit and you know it got to the point where um he would do stuff and say well i'm doing this for the benefit of you and one of the things was you know at the time he got flu shots for everybody in the office, but he didn't tell anybody. He, we, we just showed up in the morning. He was okay, line up. We're, you're getting flu shots today. I'm like, no, I'm not. He goes, what do you mean? No, you're not. He goes, I paid for it. I said, yeah, but I don't want it. I'm opting out. He goes, you can't opt out. I said, bullshit. I'm opting out. Okay. So I opted out. And once I opted out, four other people opted out. And then he got really angry. He says, you guys are all paying for it. I didn't want it to begin with. <laughs> yeah. And you uh, know, yeah, it was it was one of those very with, uh, leadership is a lot of people think that being a leader is about controlling other people. Right. And that's not what leadership is about. Leadership is not controlling other people. Leadership is about guiding other people. And he was, he, the alignment factor there was way off, mm -hmm. way, way off. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't doing things from the heart. He wasn't doing things authentically and in integrity. And the one thing I know is that when a leader takes a real good look at their people in the workplace and can identify their strength and can identify their talents 
and can identify where they're a really good fit in the workplace. Mm -hmm. That's where you create, begin to create a positive culture. And leaders who recognize that they don't want, that the best thing they can do for themselves is not to hire people like themselves. Mm -hmm. It's to hire people who are different than, than them behaviorally. Mm -hmm. Now, values is a different thing. There's a difference between behavior and values. Okay, To hire somebody like themselves behaviorally can set them up and everybody else up for failure. But when you hire people with different uh, behavior styles that can look at a problem from a 360 per, uh, per, uh, perspective, you then create a team that is open to new ideas because a respect is created because of the leader. Mm -hmm. And you you respect the people who are the perfectionists. You respect the people who are the rah rahs. You respect the people who don't like change but are the ultimate customer service professionals. Mm -hmm. You respect those folks who are take charge. And when you know what each of their superpowers are, and you put them in the right place, you create a culture that people want to get up and go to work mm -hmm. instead of dreading going to work. Because yeah. respect is in the is expected at a cellular level within the workplace. You know, and I think you know not to make this an endorsement for Apple, but Steve Jobs was not the most prolific speaker. He would upset a lot of people, but people respected him, mm -hmm. and they did what they they. Because I, I think internally, they wanted to be pushed. They wanted to achieve more. And, and yeah. Steve got under your skin so bad that you just wanted to do something to not impress the world, but impress him. And, and I, I think that's what made Apple who they are. Are the new leaders of Apple as, as, as well as, as Steve Jobs now? Um, I, I, and and same, same with Walt Disney. You know, Are the new leaders of Walt Disney as good as Walt? No. Uh, they have their own personality, and and some do better than others. Uh, did they fail at at hiring Bob Chapek? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't a leader, but they they recognized it and they quickly you know changed some things. Um, but I I think what we have to do though in in society is is we can't uh, um, look at the past and say this is the absolute. But you know, we, we do have to Im implement things that are going to help our employees. Um, Great leadership I, I, starts from the inside out. You know, I, I'm not a big proponent of the whole uh, diversity, equality, inclusion, because usually it, it excludes, you know, a lot of the people <laughs> that, that don't fit into that parameter. And so you yeah. have all these leaders confused as how they're supposed to lead. Uh, you have a point there, Rob. I see, um, you know, the goal with that was to eliminate discrimination, but in fact, it has created discrimination. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people are placed in roles, not because of their talents or their skill sets. Uh, they're placed in roles because of something other that really has no significance mm -hmm. in how it is that uh, they're going to be performing in their role as a leader. Mm -hmm. And leadership doesn't, you know, the other day I had a situation where, and, and I'm, I'm going to just say it, somebody said to me, um, I, I happen to say, well, I, I don't really see color when I look at a person because of my skill sets. I see their heart, I see their energy, I see their authenticity and their integrity. Mm -hmm. And this person looked at me and said, well, then I'm invisible to you. I was like, uh, excuse me? <laughs> uh, let me put it in perspective for you. I'm Cuban. Mm -hmm. I'm first generation Cuban American. My son-in-law is from India, okay? My daughter is dating uh, a, a gentleman who is Chinese. My son is adopted from Guatemala. Mm -hmm. uh, don't sit here and talk to me about and make that kind of insulting comment yeah. because I love 
seeing people for who they are. Every single person mm -hmm. has, a, they teach us something right. and they're reflective in, in ourselves. And when we look at who they really are from the inside, we all bleed the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all bleed the same. And when you look at blood as a living force and in my work, uh, in, in, as a healer, because I, I help to clear the emotional baggage that mm -hmm. a lot of us carry and gets in our way when we are leaders, because a lot of fear can, you know, fear is about forgetting everything is all right, but we're human and mm -hmm. fear can truly stop us from being who it is that we are meant to be. And, and when things happen over and over again, and we can't cross, cross that finish line because something keeps stopping us. Mm -hmm. I can get in there. My clients call me the intuitive truth detective because I can identify exactly what the issue is and we can uh, work it through and clear it out. And to have somebody say to me, well, then I'm invisible to you. Well, if that's what you think, that's on you, bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? clearly, you know, yeah. I'm seeing very, very clearly. And I want people, uh, you know, I, I tell, I, I, I work with leaders and just share with them hire the people who will do the best job for you. Because when you do that, you create a culture where people feel valued, mm -hmm. people feel appreciated, people can do their job well. Mm -hmm. And when they can do that, magic happens from within. Right. And I'm a miracle believer. I believe in miracles. I, miracles happen every single day from the moment I wake up and I can see things. That's a miracle. And people may look at me and say, oh, well, you're such a Pollyanna. And don't I love it? <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, is that I think that uh, and, and even from my own perspective is, is that, you know, I, I've learned to block out the haters. I've learned to take their their negative words and turn them into positives and you know, I, I went from owning a carpet cleaning business to being a consultant that, that helps people all over the world. And, and we've produced all these books and, and, and people look at me like, Rob, you didn't even go to college. I went to college. I didn't finish. But I knew that there was something better for me out there and I reached for it and I did it. And But here's the thing is that I think leaders. Uh, forget that they can have emotions you know a lot of the lawyers and doctors that I, I i help i think they've all gone to the school you know the vulcan school of no emotion they they they, they think that they they can't you know uh Love that. you know have a personality yeah but they can and they should and i mean the the, the, the one of my lawyer clients that we helped produce their book it was called the empathetic lawyer and his his big thing was that you know, he wants to show people that he has empathy, that he will meet with them. He will have dinner with them. He will meet their family. He will find out everything he can about them before he even takes the case because he wants to be able to best be able to defend them or, you know, uh, you know, against whether it be a nefarious insurance companies or whatever. But he mm. wants a deeper understanding of it. And, and I, I think that most leaders try to distance themselves from their employees. They don't want to become that friend. They don't want to become their family. They don't want to know anything about them. Yeah. And, and, it, and it becomes a problem. Well, they don't want to get too attached. Yeah. They don't want to get too attached. But I, I do want to say this one thing. I believe that every single person on this planet has leadership uh, opportunities and they they can be leaders. Even if it means... If you are, uh, to me, the most important person in the workplace is actually the janitors because you can't operate in a uh, environment that isn't clean. It's very difficult. I'm not going to say you can't. It's challenging to operate to your fullest potential in a place that's not, that is not tidy or clean or whatever. And the one thing I've always said is a janitor who comes up with a new way of washing the floor or cleaning the window or whatever and implements that that's an act of leadership mm -hmm. because it is helping other people be better than they already are so we all have leadership opportunities 
and qualities of leadership when we believe in ourselves and we take inspired action to do it. It's not just about the leaderships who are uh, the leaders who are the CEOs, the entrepreneurs, and the um, and the professionals. It's everyone within the workplace. And when everyone in the workplace is in, inspired to be able to speak up, you know, one of the failures I think with uh, a lot of our leaders is they think they know what to do, but their failure is they forget to ask the people who have the boots on the ground that are doing the job. Mm -hmm. And when you ask the people who are actually doing the job, what it is that they see is working and what isn't working. And you do that with everyone that is there and you start to look for the patterns and you start to look at at different ways of doing things. You are elevating not only your workers, but you're elevating your skill sets as a leader because you see things. But in you know, I'm called Hawk Mother. It's it's my crone name. And from the spiritual perspective, I, I was given that name. I look at things from the thirty thousand foot view as the hawk. Mm -hmm. Okay, I fly up. And I look at the whole landscape from the 30,000 foot view, but then from the mother view, the earth view, I go down and I'm talking to everybody, you know, what do you think? How is it working for you? What is happening? What could be done better? What needs to change? What do we need to take away? What do we need to put in? When you go from both of those perspectives, from the 30,000 foot view to ground level, to the mother level, to the Gaia level, you are creating a full picture with a 360 degree perspective that allows you and everybody else to create something magnificent. Mm -hmm. And it's something that a lot of leaders uh, don't understand because they're still in the old leadership paradigm yeah. of command and control. Yeah, it, it's, it's control doesn't work. I've learned that a long time ago. Um, and, and uh, you know, those who think that you can control things, well, you just need to read my Rob versus books because you're never in control. <laughs> so. and, and here's the thing. You gain control when you give up control. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is the more that you try to be in control, the angrier you're going to get because you just can't control people, but you can guide them. Yes. You know, direct them into th certain situations. And you can ask questions, but, you know, it's, it's. Yeah. And, and it's a, asking the questions, you're absolutely spot on with that because when you ask questions, especially open ended questions instead of yes, no questions, you put yourself in a position where you're really allowing the person that, that is in front of you to share their story, to mm -hmm. share their perspective. And you really get to know them much better than yes and no questions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just saw the uh, uh, the news the other day where I, I can't remember what company it was, but they told all these people, you know, uh, you can work from home tomorrow. And then they scheduled a Zoom call and everybody who attended the Zoom call was fired. That's like, that's not leadership. That's cowardice. <laughs> oh, that 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 just hurt. Oh, ow. Yeah, it was. I mean, that that that's ugliness. They they didn't want these people being fired in the office and then causing a commotion. So <laughs> they fired them through Zoom. No, that's ugliness. That, that that's ugliness that, that yeah. that's uh and unfortunately actions like that uh again the ripple effect action like that actions like that have a way of coming back in and and i i don't know i don't, I don't you know people say oh that's karma i go no nah, i don't like to use the word karma it, it it's just an energetic uh spillage mm -hmm. that down the road something is going to help them understand how inefficient mm -hmm. and ugly that specific act is. Well, you know, let's talk about understanding because you've, 
you know, crafted your own books to help people understand? You know, you want to talk about some of them? I see well, them up there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're on my little shelf there. Well, the uh, the one on the far right is an innovator, is the innovators. I was in a co-authored book with Terry Levine on that one. Um, the middle, the green book, 1-800-Courtesy, that's quite the story. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That is a book about telephone skills. We all need those. Yeah. Well, people keep saying to me, I would, uh, that it would do me well to rewrite it and, and bring it back into, you know, bring it into the 2024. But, you know, I wrote that book in 1998. So a lot of stuff has changed. And, and, and I probably talked to some of them on the phone trying to, you know. Yeah, well, it was very, very interesting because I was uh, in my office at my center. And one of the big name phone companies, I don't remember if it was AT&T or Verizon or one of them, called me for some reason. And they had my book in their hand. <laughs> and one of the, it was pretty funny. One of the comments that was said was, we love how you describe answering the phone. It's like a handshake in person. Mm -hmm. So when a person gives you a wimpy handshake, because I used to teach networking skills all the time, when someone gives you a wimpy handshake, it doesn't create a lot of confidence. But how you answer the phone is equally as important. And if it's a wimpy uh, answer, or way that you answer, it doesn't create confidence in the caller. So how you answer the phone is equal to how you shake someone's hand. So if it's wimpy or if it's strong, it's the same type of thing. And they were blown away by that statement. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, that, that's, you know, that you're teaching your people how to be strong on the phone and be welcoming because that is your first line in creating trust. People buy from those they know, like, and trust. And trust feel safe. I feel safe. Safety is huge. Safety mm -hmm. is huge. So I wrote this book on telephone skills and the whole thing came about out of, I didn't plan it. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would write a book ever. And I was giving a uh, talk on image. I, I was a certified image consultant, which is what started this company uh, 37 years ago. And I was asked by the local chamber of commerce here, if I would come in and address their people for a meeting on dress for success, I said, sure, why not? And she calls me up and says, would you mind going over to uh, this publisher who's giving their books to us for free, but it's too expensive to ship. And I'm laughing, I'm like, the state is, I live in Rhode Island. The state is, you can go from one end to the other in an hour. I mean, come on. And she said, oh, it's probably 20 minutes from you. It was three minutes from my house. <laughs> and I walked in and, and Bob was in uh, telecommunications at that time. I put, and all on the walls were all these books on telecommunications. And the one thing he didn't have was telephone skills. Mm -hmm. Three hours later, I walk out with a book contract. And I got in my car. Most people would be, yeah. I was petrified, <laughs> scared to death. And I sat in the car holding onto the steering wheel, screaming out of abject fear. Mm -hmm. And I walked in the house and I told my husband, uh, I got a book contract. And he's looking at me like, you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the same thing when I decided to write the first book and my wife's like you're gonna write a book really why <laughs> 43 books later she's like you know i i don't think i've only read about five of your books <laughs> yeah well that, that that's how that book came about and i and the thing is that book landed in my lap in at the same time that we were i, I was uh running a business here or trying to run a business here. I was just in the startup phases again. We just moved here. The Navy brought us here. And we were looking for property to buy because we decided that we were going to retire here from the Navy, which we did. And I was also adopting my son. So mm -hmm. I was writing a book, running a business, adopting my son and, uh, you know, all, and trying to buy a house. And the day, this is about control, by the way, 
I was literally going out of my mind. My uh, stress levels were maniacal. And I just said to my husband, I'm done. Let's rent for another year. We, I just can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I let go of control, complete control of buying the house. Just let go. And the next day in the newspaper, this house showed up. Now, mind you, I had written down exactly what it is I wanted in my house. Exactly what I wanted. I also know what I didn't want, but I focused on what I wanted. This is this is my first law, real big law of attraction scenario, which I didn't even know what I was doing. And um, we walked into the house and I went through my list. Check, 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 check. Down to the hammock between two trees and the wooden swing set in the backyard, the wooden deck outside the right number of rooms and bathrooms and finished basement and office. And it, it was, my husband just looked at me. He's like, how did you do that? <laughs> I said, well, I, I, I have no clue what I did. I didn't understand energy then. I didn't understand where, where I was going or what I was doing. But when I let go of control, mm -hmm. the house manifested. And uh, for that, I'm very grateful. And then the orange book, um, I went to get training on, I became a certified law of attraction trainer. And one of the women who got certified with me was the publisher of that book. And there were 12 of us in that book who were all law of attraction trainers. So that was unlock the power of you. And today my retreat is called unlock the power in you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that's all about. Then came the Enchanted Boardroom. Now that book is actually being rewritten because uh, I start off with the practical and business. And then I get into the personal with disc and communications and all that good stuff. And then we get into the spiritual. And the story behind that book and why I'm rewriting it is because number one, the, the title needs to change, number one. But number two, Right after my mom died two years ago, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm reading the book and I just got this, it, it was just thought that again, another thunderbolt, I wrote the book backwards. I wrote the book, Practical, Personal, Spiritual. And what I realized is with every person that I looked at that I have worked with, we always started out with the spiritual first, then the personal, then the practical. And when we went to that space, that's where the healing came in because I needed to heal all of the emotional baggage that was holding them back and creating the physical stuff that was manifesting from the way they were thinking, the way they were, um, what they were, their perspectives were that, where they were focusing on. Mm -hmm. So the new book is being rewritten and, um, I have it on my calendar because I'm self-publishing it as of right now anyway, to be published in November. <laughs> we'll see. And um, that's when I realized it's got to be the spiritual first, the personal and the practical in that order. And when you do that, that's when from a leadership perspective and the spiritual and the personal are about values. This is I'm not talking about religion here. Mm -hmm talking about energy i'm talking about values i'm talking about powerful emotions i'm talking about compassion and empathy mm -hmm. when all of those things are in play for oneself first then you can do that for others mm -hmm. and so it that is about the spiritual the stress piece yeah and art math all these years ago in 20 you know 2000 i mean i bought the book uh the book fell at my feet uh, was how many years ago before I got certified Be, and I gave it to all my clients because I realized that this was the missing piece, the head and the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, 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 it's your core. And, and I, I think that everybody needs to have those core beliefs that they hang on to that, that, that drives them, that, that inspires them. Um, you know, Steve and I talk about that in our, in our newest book. Um, and and the thing is, is that I, I think money drives too many of us and, and, and see that we're the shiny objects and they'll, oh, 
let's do that. Or I'm going to get paid this amount. And then we forget about the people that helped us get to where we were. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's, it's, it's never been about money. It's always been about freedom and legacy. You know, the business that I created needs to be able to help me do what I want, when I want, how I want, and for the benefit of who I want or whom I want. And legacy, what am I leaving behind for the for the next generation to learn from, to get them inspired? To and it's the books, the podcasts. It's 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 those things, and and so and it's me, you wrap it, yourself it, around. Yeah. It, it, it's when, when you wrap yourself with people like Steve Gamlin, okay, who I adore. He's wonderful, uh, very much in integrity and authenticity. It says an awful lot about you, and I, I think when. When you wrap yourself around the understanding that the money is going to come because of everything else, when you put the money first, that doesn't work. Right. But when you put all those other things first, people first, your values first, your integrity, your authenticity, get rid of the FOMO. Mm -hmm. Right. The the FOMO piece is is ridiculous. Some of the people at the top of my industry, I am no more interested in being in their company than a hole in the head. Why? Because there's there's a lacking of integrity and authenticity, and there's so much focus on money. Mm -hmm. That's not getting you the freedom and where you want to go. When you do live your purpose, your mission, your vision, you are so spot on, Rob. Your words are so powerful. Because when you do that, that's how you create freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's by serving from your vision and your mission internally and have it being a heart-centered vision and mission. So yes, you are spot on. Steve's the same way. So I love, you know, reading your book that you and Steve read. It was, it's a hoot. You know, yeah. I, and, and the thing is, is that the, you don't have to spend, you know, six months, eight months, a year writing your book. No. And with with Steve and I, it was just the culmination of of seven episodes that we had on the E Heroes podcast. And after the seventh one, I knew that these had to be put together into a book. And so it was transcribed, re-edited, and I put it together and probably within two weeks. And I sent a copy to Steve. I said, What do you think? And he goes, What do you want me to do? You already did all the work. So just Go through and edit it. Yeah. And uh, you know, so it was it was almost a hands-off project for him. But you know, I knew that both both of us could benefit and not not just benefit, we weren't gonna benefit monetarily because we're basically giving the book away, or the, the proceeds of the book are going to his charity. Um, I, I just wanted it out there for people to learn from and and to experience something different because it's it's not. It's not a typical book that you would pick up and, and, you know, everything would flow paragraph to paragraph. It's, it's the transcripts of these, of these interviews. So it's, it's like being on a a porch and, and, and just listening to us have this conversation and people just love it. They just, they think it's just, um, and, 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 you know, it's different than all the other books I've written. You know, but it, well, here's it's... something different with, with this book. Okay. You, I don't realize, I don't think you realize what you are modeling. You are modeling an intuitive hit that was given to you. And you followed that intuitive hit. And everything fell at your feet effortlessly within two weeks. Mm-hmm. That's when you are tapping into your inner guidance system, your inner CEO, when you have to work hard at something, you're not tapping into your inner CEO. You're right. not tapping into your, what I call your wise inner guidance system or your wig. <laughs> your wise inner guidance system. You modeled something very, very valuable for your listeners. Mm-hmm. And that is listen to those intuitive hits, see where they lead you, and watch the magic unfold. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. That's what you did. So when projects like that come, come together so quickly, they're meant to happen. Right. And that's how you just keep operating. You keep operating like that. You're, you're working with both sides of your brain. You're working with the right side and the left side. And, 
you're creating new um, uh, newer systems within the brain, newer pathways, I should say, within the brain that just take you to a very phenomenal place of what I call commies and flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Am I right with that? With what happened? <laughs> You know, and the thing is, is that it's happened multiple times on multiple books that I've I've written over the years and, and uh, like lessons from the dojo. It was just a simple idea that <clears throat> it was 101 kick butt ways to improve your life, business and relationships. And it was modeled after my kids karate. <clears throat> so you go through so many different lessons and every lesson is a different is a new page. So it was very simple. <clears throat> a lesson, my thoughts, next page, next lesson. But. You go through so many lessons, you increase in your belt and you go from white to black. And 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 um, a lot of the karate studios around me wanted copies. And um, it was funny because it was I, I, I launched it in 2015. Um, my launch date coincided with my wife and I going to Italy. So I really didn't spend any time on the launch date because I, I couldn't. I was overseas. So, you know, it it. it the launch kind of fizzled. I, I, and, and, and I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's that. Uh, but it was funny because about a year later, um, the Argyle, Texas town council or something all posed with a book and sent me the picture. <laughs> and so I started posting the picture everywhere and sales took off again. And so was, what, again, what you just modeled, you, you modeled something else that uh, it's been a, it's been a very interesting theme this week uh, actually the last 10 days i've had people from all directions at different levels say to me i want to change the world and i'm like i don't <laughs> i don't want to change the world and they look at me like i have three heads on my shoulders i said first of all i i'm all about stress management I don't want that stress and pressure on my back and my shoulders. I don't want my shoulders to ache and my neck to ache because I think I have this vision and mission that I have to change the world. That's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about, and this is where this comes in with you. It's about recognizing that I am meant to work with the people who are in front of me. I am meant to work with these specific people and there will be a ripple effect of what they learn from me and what I learned from them. And Rob, what you did, you let go of control. These people did this book. You had a ripple effect. Somebody picked that up and there you go. And you are affecting the world. And as I say to folks, um, and, and this isn't religious, this is from a team building perspective that I'm offering this. Jesus had 12 volunteers and he had mother mary and mary magdalene so he had 14 people sharing his vision mission and words Mm -hmm. and look at 2000 years later what culminated from that specific team building activity (laughs) and it's the ripple effect and he started with 12 people Mm -hmm. and uh the number 12 came up today master number going back to the beginning (laughs) Um, the number 12 is very powerful. And then, so what you did was you created a ripple effect with your book and that ripple effect went further and further and further. So did you change the world? Not necessarily. You changed the lives of those people you were meant to change. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And A lot less stress and pressure. The the, the the books aren't perfect. There's errors in all of them. Um, and, and I challenge anybody to go through and, and, and pick them all out because I know they're there. Uh, I've already been told. You know, but I always tell people, hey, look, did you enjoy the message? Well, yes. yeah. And then I don't care about the 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 mess ups. Uh-huh. You know, because yeah. it, it's for me it was it's it's always been good is good enough. Perfection takes too long and costs too much money. And, it does. and you know, my my father-in-law, uh, he passed away six months ago, but he was always a perfectionist. He was a, a carpenter. He could design all kinds of great stuff. 
but he would put as much detail in the front of the piece as behind the piece. Nobody sees the back. Make a plane. It cuts the cost down, and people are still impressed with what you just created. So you know, he goes, I can't do that. I, I have to make it perfect in the back. Well, then people would complain that the, the project cost too much, took too much time. You know, they were he was getting a bad reputation for wasting people's time. I said, look, you, you got it. He just he couldn't get it out of his head that good was good enough. Well, may, may I give you a little spin on that? Sure. Perfection puts you in a box. So if you can imagine yourself in the box of perception, uh, of uh, perfection, that box has a lid on it, four sides and a bottom. Where's the creativity from within the box? There's nothing. It, it's, it's perfect. You mm. can't make any changes. You're stuck. It, it, it's finished. Whereas with excellence, this is the word to trade. Excellence gives you the ability to do what you want to do, make it as beautiful and as detailed as you want. But living in the land of excellence allows you to take that object higher, wider, and deeper. And you can, you can keep making it better and better and better. With perfection, there's no change. You're stuck. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us who are in that land, who live in the land of perfection, we end up getting incredibly stressed because nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And that stress, you know, we have a lot of the engineers, the architects, the financial types, the very detailed focused people, uh, the artists. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember there was one dress that I made. I, I used to be a seamstress in my early days and I made everything. And I made this amazing dress. It was absolutely beautiful. And uh, it took, it must have taken me about 150 hours to put this thing together because of all the detail work that I did. And I look at it today and it wasn't so much that I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to feel amazing in it because mm -hmm. I made it. Now today, I think I could fit one leg in it. <laughs> I was so tiny then. But I look at that dress today and I'm like, okay, what would I do differently? And I can still take the dress apart and do different things to it because it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So how do people find you? Where do they go? Well, they can uh, send me an email at terry at intuitiveleadership.com. Uh, they can go to my website, intuitiveleadership.com. And they can find me on Facebook at the Smile Initiative Hub. Uh, Smile Initiative is the umbrella organization for intuitive leadership and Shiftology. Shiftology is a trademark where we work with the Shiftology accountability matrix and take our, uh, our uh, folks on an accountability journey. And also it's the home of Smile Initiative events. So we have a lot of wonderful things coming up. It's a lot of fun. You know, and we could talk all day long, um, but our time's coming short. And but I do want everybody to recognize accountability, and and I think that you should be accountable for everything that you do, um, and and learn to be accountable for others. And I think that's what makes a good leader. Have I ever considered myself a leader? Um, to some extent, uh, I'm more of a director, you know, um, and 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 I guess more of a you know. I, I just, I, to me, it, it's, it's, I don't like being someone's boss and telling them what to do. I, I, I like to just guide them and say, Hey, look, these are your skill sets. I know that you're good at doing this. You do that. And then just bring me the work when you're done. That's kind of who I am. It's, it's just, that's my style. Everybody does it a little differently, but you know, please go to Terry's uh, intuitive leadership.com and learn more stuff. Thank you. Rob, this has been fantastic. Absolutely loved it. We will see everyone on the next episode. Adios.